What is up guys, New Limits here and today I have another leveling guide for you. If you are one of the lucky ones to get the Blood Tide Blade in Season 22, then this video is for you. We did a 39 minute run, I didn't use any blood shards and of course we don't have shadow clones because it's not Season 22 yet. I also have a 1 to 70 run with Relina's Shadow Hook coming up in a few days so look out for that one. The only weapon that is left is the Nair's Black Death so I'll definitely make a video for that one as well. I'm gonna run you through the playthrough but before we do don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I really hope you guys enjoy. Alright so we're gonna create our character. I'm always gonna take the female necromancer because I like it more. I'm gonna take the wings. I'm gonna equip a pet. We're gonna put it on torment one. Don't forget to save and close first. Then do the challenge rift to get the challenge rift back and the materials so we can actually uh, do all the things that we're gonna be talking about and then when you're on torment one you start the game <clears throat> I always like to go to the town in act five Because it just works a little bit better in my opinion So we're gonna hire the templar we're gonna take the dagger from the enchantress We're gonna check what damage is higher the dagger is more damage So we're gonna pick up the dagger if you want you can roll for shards You can also do it when you are level 16 when you went and get the cube for today in this video I just wanted to show you guys how strong the blood type blade actually is so we are not even gonna spend any shards. Uh, as you could have seen I also just don't have any shards so I can't spend them. But if you get the blood type blade you don't actually even need it at all. So what we're gonna do here uh, we bought from the merchants now we are gonna craft an axe. Level 5 we're gonna craft a level 10 dagger. Because these do not use uh, any yellows. So the Veiled Crystals are the materials that you're gonna um, empty out on very fast. I prefer to go for a two-handed axe. Because in my opinion they just roll more often for percent chance and life per hit than the maces do. I checked this quite a few times. I tested this a bunch. And for me the two-handed axe was just a better option. Here I don't re-roll anymore because I wanted to simulate a real seasonal um, journey here. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna craft axes but I'm not gonna craft all the axes because I just wanted to make sure that I do not use too many yellow items. I didn't count it but I'm sure I didn't use all of my yellow count, uh, my yellow materials. So that's why I actually don't craft everything. So normally you would craft of course until you have uh, everything. Normally you would go for the level 16 all the way up till the point where you get your level requirement weapon. But as I did and this is something that I would do in the seasonal too. Is you first go for the level requirement. You roll till you get it. And then you go craft all the rest of your axes when you still have the materials left. If you don't have the materials the level 70 requirement is the most important thing so do that first and then I would definitely um, you know if you don't have any materials left then you would just purchase the weapons. You can buy them from the merchants too they are often less good but it's still gonna be worth it to get the level requirement. So now we're gonna, gonna go to the Runes of Seshron instantly. What you wanna do is always stay really close to enemies when you are gonna be leveling. Definitely in the early game when you're level 1 and 2 you level very fast. And your level deals damage around you. So you can use that damage to kill a few enemies just that little bit faster. So this is actually really annoying because I want to walk forward. Killing this elite is actually not worth it but he's um, blocking the way and I can't pass him. That's very annoying. We just want to keep our massacre bonus as high as we can. You don't always want to be popping the corpse explosions because they might one shot everything and you always want to keep a few enemies alive so you can keep your massacre bonus up. Once you are level 5 don't forget to take your axe, that is really important because you know you crafted them you want to use them. So always keep that in mind the weapons that you crafted, once you get those levels you definitely go ahead and you equip them. Okay. 
if for some reason you don't have enough veiled crystals anymore in the cube you can convert materials you can convert the arcane dust or the rusible parts you get more rusible parts and arcane dust than you get veiled crystals and you can actually convert them in the cube uh, once you get the cube of course to get some more veiled crystals if you need them so that is something that you should definitely keep in mind So here again you just focus on your massacre bonus, that is also the reason why I don't go for the uh, two-handed level 8 axe. You could craft that but I just prefer the axe and the dagger because it just has um, a little bit more attack speed. I do notice that you are a little bit less tough and you die a little bit easier but if you're not playing on hardcore it is fine, we're gonna die multiple times in this run if you really want to be fast about it and as efficient as possible. I think dying is just kind of, you know, part of it. So what we're gonna go here is uh, actually life from death. Because we are using the corpse explosion and later on we're gonna be using the devour uh, rune. Life from death is actually really nice to keep your, um, your health up because it's gonna spawn health globes every single time you consume a corpse. And all of those health globes are actually very useful. It is even more useful when you're in a group and there is someone that has the rune life from death. There is going to be a lot of health globes and you're actually going to create a lot of survivability. So we're going to play around uh, that passive today. Somebody in the comments said that I, I should tr give that rune a try. I tried it and it's actually really good. So don't forget at level 10 when you enter Elder Sanctum, so you did the Rules of Cicheron, you get into the new zone, Elder Sanctum, you want to make sure you go back, you can purchase boots, pants and a head, and you can purchase jewels as well. So just make sure when you're level 1 and you get into town um, Act 3, let's say, make sure that you go to a different town because otherwise in that town you will not be able to get rings or amulets. And also not the belt. So you really want to make sure you do that, go to a different town where you've already been, then the, the towns will refresh to the level that you are at that point, which is level 10. <clears throat> if you're not level 10, that's fine too, but you really want to try to get level 10 when you go to Elder Sanctum. And with the rings and the amulets, you just want to focus on um, main stats, so intelligence or plus damage is the best. But if that's not possible, don't, you know, try to go too far out of your way. If you can just get some vitality, some survivability, some attack speed maybe, that's fine too. It's it's not the best of course, you want main stat or damage. Damage being the best one of course, but you know, it's fine. What you want to do here with the Rat Kings, uh, you have your, uh, your command skeletons. What I always do with the Rat Kings is I put my command skeletons on the Rat Kings. When they meet a certain threshold, they're gonna spawn little rats around them. And the command skeletons just make them get to those uh, little rats just a little bit faster. You can then make them explode and they just trigger a massive, massive explosion. So that's why you see me the, putting the command skeletons on the Rat King every single time. It's just really useful, makes it a little bit faster too. See, they spawn the little rats really fast and can just start exploding them. It's really important in this zone that you keep your massacre bonus up as high as you can. You can get some really insane massacre bonuses here. This is a, a really amazing zone. It's just really unfortunate that it is the second zone in Rules of Session. Otherwise we would just use this zone for leveling because that would be absolutely amazing. But the first zone is actually really bad so that's why we can't do that. But as you can see like the explosions it's just absolutely crazy. So what you're focusing on when you're doing this run is you want to be at the very least level 16 when you uh, leave this area. Level 16 is the level where you can use your gloves. So if you went to Kadala, normally you would go to Kadala, you would try to get a or a Pox Faults or a Leoric's Crown for some more ex experience when you get a Ruby in there. 
You could also go for for the Iron Rose when you have the Blood Tide Blade. That's also a very viable option. And of course, the best one and the one that you should pretty much always go for, the uh, Grasp of Essence, the gloves for for uh, Corpse Explosion. They are absolutely amazing. Pretty much for every single build, you should get them. So it's not a bad idea to just level one, um, go and gamble for them right away. But we are using the Blood Tide Blade today, and I think with the Blood Tide Blade, Devour is actually better than the Corpse Explosion. But Corpse Explosion can still definitely be used in this setup, of course. So yeah, focus on, on the Grasp of Essence. It's by far the best one. If you have Blood Tide Blade, I would suggest you can go for uh, still the Grasp of Essence or for the um, Iron Rose. But Leoric's Crown is also perfectly fine. Fox Falls is fine. It's a little bit your choice, but I'm just gonna show you today. You don't actually even need Skadala when you have the Blood Tide Blade. It's just gonna carry you just all by itself. It's really unfortunate that we didn't get a Cursed Chest event here. Sometimes you have a Cursed Chest and our Massacre bonus would have been absolutely insane. But unfortunately we can't. What I would suggest in Season 22 when you have the Shadow Clones, you might actually want to do this on Torment 3. I wouldn't suggest doing it on Torment 6 because the Shrine Spawns can be very annoying. But I would suggest going Torment 2 or Torment 3 because you might get a Shrine pretty fast, you get a Shadow Clone and just that little bit of extra damage that you can get in. Okay, so then we leave, we're gonna put it on Torment 6. From this point onwards, we're just gonna stay on Torment 6. You're gonna craft a two-handed scythe. Always make sure at the start you don't use all of your Veiled Crystals, crystals and all of your materials that you can craft the two-handed scythe. This is really important. Now, it doesn't really matter what upgrade we... Um, we got but I just wanted to show you how you would do it but we were going for the blood tide blade for today I've already done the Meltorius it's the 44 minute run today we're doing the blood tide blade which is uh, the 39 minute run which is just absolutely insane and I also did the Relina's shadow hook so I've already cleared that one too but I believe you're gonna see this one before that but I've already done that clear and it's 50 minutes which is still pretty good so that's also coming to the channel for sure. And I'm gonna do a Nair's run as well. So I'm really excited about that one too. We'll just see how that goes. But I have, haven't really done that one yet. So I hope I can get somewhere in between like a 45 to 50 minutes. That would be really nice with the Nair's. Maybe it can be faster, but I don't think it's better than the Mel Meltorius Petrified Spike. So what we're doing here, of course, is just we're resetting, we're buying all of our items. I would highly suggest you focus on toughness and not on damage. Definitely when you're going with the Blood Tide Blade, you really need the toughness. The damage is not that useful. Because with your multiplier, every enemy that you hit increases your damage of Blood Nova. And when you hit more enemies, you know, you're gonna deal more damage anyways. So instead of going for that little bit of extra damage, just make sure you hit a, a few more enemies. And you're gonna make up for that damage loss anyways. So toughness is way more important here than the damage that you get. As you can see, you're just plowing through. You're really, really strong. With the Corpse Explosion, the first Curse Chest event that I did was actually not that great. So what you might want to do when you just start off, the Golem, we don't even use it at this point. And we'll never use it because we're gonna change it right away. What you might want to do is don't numlock the Devour. And you might want to get Corpse Explosion as well in there. 
so you can use the corpse explosion for the cursed chest event. That is maybe what you want to do for the early levels. Once we get into the later levels and you got the aura of frailty, then your damage is more than sufficient enough. But now I feel like with the corpse explosion we would clear it just that little bit faster. But as you can see we still managed to do it, it's still fine, we're strong. It's just a suggestion of course, because we're not really doing anything with the blood golem anyways. Now here I'm trying to tide it along a little bit so we can keep our massacre bonus up. Unfortunately that didn't work. So what you just want to do is you just want to walk around, go around as much as you can and try to get into a really dense area with a lot of density, with a lot of monsters and just blow them up. So like I said your blood nova is going to deal more damage the more enemies you pass through or the more enemies you hit with it. That's also why we're going with the Blood Nova, the um, unstable compound, because you gain more range. And if you get more range, that basically means you can hit more enemies, and hitting more enemies means a lot more damage. So that's why we're going for that rune. Obviously, you are going to die. At this point, I would actually suggest that you just leave right away. You just died. It's better to reset, go for the merchants, buy your uh, new toughness items, equip your new weapon and just refresh. Definitely when you've already done the cursed chest, it might actually be better to just leave right away because we're not going to be strong enough anymore. But you can see I'm a stubborn person and I wanted to clear this. So that's why I kept going and now I'm like, okay, no, maybe I should go back. But that is my stubborn nature. <laughs> so we're just gonna start the game again, we're gonna refresh, we're gonna get to the merchant, we're gonna purchase our items, definitely focus on your toughness. Make sure that all of your skills are fine, you can go for, uh, when with the devour rune, you can go for satiated, which is really nice in the early stages, and maybe later on you might want to go for um, cannibalize, because that's gonna heal you more. So what sat sat satiated is gonna do is it actually is gonna increase your life, and when you go for the other rune, the cannibalize, it's gonna heal you every time you consume a corpse. Of course the healing is not gonna do anything when you get one shot, so that's why your toughness is really important, but the healing will actually help you out just that little bit more uh, in the later stages when you get to around uh, 65 plus, when it gets actually a little bit tough to survive, the cannibalized rune might be better than satiated. So here we're going for life from that is absolutely amazing for the health, we're gonna go with standalone for more um, armor and for rigor mortis because we are dealing poison damage with our blood nova. And then you're just gonna do it again. Don't forget to numlock your devour. I, I think I actually forgot to do that here, that's why I died too. So you got dislocation on your bone armor, so if you would die there's a lot of enemies around you, just instantly click your bone armor, everything's gonna get stunned around you, and you can just hit your bone armor, everything's gonna die. You know, just, you're just trying to get as much as possible, uh, as much damage as possible down with your blood nova, so just, you know, get around the enemies as much as you can. Because your damage does fall off very hard when you only hit a few enemies. As you can see, if there's only like 4 or 5 enemies that I'm hitting, my damage is like pretty much non-existent. But then when there are like 10, 15, 20 enemies, everything just instantly vaporizes. As you can see, your damage is just way higher. So the two possible, the, the two best possible weapons that you can have in my opinion is of course the Meltorius because you are gonna go for the Bone Spear set. But Blood Tide Blade for the leveling process is just, you know, it's just amazing. It's gonna be an absolute breeze. So 
So these are actually some pretty difficult levels once you get here because you're closing in on your level 70 requirement weapon. So what you want to do here is um, just focus on your toughness, try to not do anything all too crazy. When you get to the cursed chest, just make the little guy spawn too. And once you're in the middle of the pack, you just blow up with your Blood Nova. And then you're just good to go. As you can see, you're not hitting as many enemies and your damage is falling off significantly. Of course, we were a little bit unlucky with our level 70 level requirement. We didn't really get an awful lot of um, level requirement. And because of that, our Veil Crystals were, you know, almost depleted, so we couldn't actually get all the two-handed axes that we would normally get. So this is definitely possible in like 35 minutes if everything goes well. This can go insanely fast. So just try to keep that Massacre bonus up as much as you can. There you go. So normally in Season 22 you would get a Shadow Clone. Which is gonna help you of course too. Just gonna clear this room out really quickly. And once we've done that, we're just gonna go back, reset. Just make sure that you are using the right skills. So I think Aura of Frailty is, a, is really strong in combination with Blood Nova because you are rather close ranged anyways. So you're really going to get really good value out of your Aura of Frailty. And we're going to pair that up with two passives that are incredibly strong uh, with Spreading Malediction and Eternal Torment. Your damage is just going to significantly go higher. And I think with the Blood Tide Blade, it's actually really, really good. Because you need to hit fewer enemies, so if you have a big pack, they're gonna explode anyways. But if you're hitting just a little bit fewer enemies, your damage is still gonna be a lot higher because of the combination with Eternal Torment and with uh, Spreading Malediction. If you don't know what that does, basically you have an aura around you with your curse. Every enemy that you walk past is just gonna get cursed. The curse is gonna last there forever. And for enemy, each and every enemy that you cursed, you're gonna get 1% increased damage. So you can imagine how much damage that can be if there's a lot of insects falling, a lot of enemies there. You can have like a 50% increased damage. Very easily. So once you reset, just go back. You just want to make sure to check your level requirement weapon every single time that once you get there, you're using it. It's going to be a huge damage increase. We got somewhat unlucky. We only get it at level 49. But I think that's a good representation of what it can be in a season. You don't always get the really nice ones. I think level requirements above 20 is pretty good. That would be very lucky if you could get that. Also a really good reason why you want to go with a two-handed axe and not with a mace is because one, I feel like the axes just roll with life per hit more often and with the percent chance on the secondary roll. But the Haunted Vision is a very important item for the Necromancer, but it's also a really difficult whip, um, item to get. And what you could do with that level 70 axe that you already crafted, if you have the materials for it, at level 70 you might be able to upgrade the rare item once you got the materials and you maybe can get the Measure Smith's Reaver which is gonna give you a lot of uh, cooldown reduction which can really help you out um, with the build until you get the Haunted Vision. As you can see our damage is just non-existent right now because we're hitting only one. I must wait 
So these, of course, are the problems with the Blood Tide Blade. But these occasions don't happen very often. Your Massacre bonus, of course, isn't super important to keep up because you're already on Torment 6, but you want to keep that up as much as you possibly can. Of course, because it is gonna give you that extra level, maybe even two levels sometimes. But don't get too hung up on it. If you can't keep it up, it's fine. You're still gonna level incredibly fast. But keeping that up, of course, is gonna give you a few extra levels. So always make sure when you are using the Eternal Torment Spreading Malediction Curse, that, that combination that you walk around some enemies first, it's just gonna increase your damage. So we're level 48, we're almost at our level requirement. And then you're just gonna see we're gonna be absolutely blasting for the few levels. Um, up until like 65 or 66 and then it always starts getting a little bit more difficult That's why you really want to focus on that toughness And I don't actually go for the devour the um, cannibalize rune, but I suggest When you hit level 65 and above you should go for devour with um, the cannibalize rune Just for the straight-up healing And if you're uh, losing health, just get the uh, health globes every single time that you spawn from the life from death. And there we go. Can I just go back now? This step is just really important. Don't forget to do this every single time. At the end of my playthrough, you're gonna see I'm gonna be level 68 and I had to restart and I didn't went to the merchants and I just instantly went into a game. And I instantly just die right away just because I didn't purchase. So it's incredibly important to keep your armor updated as much as you can. Okay, you don't have to craft them because you probably don't have the materials for it, but purchase them every single time from the vendors. Check all the three vendors that you can check because they sometimes, you know, have, have a really nice weapon in their arsenal. They You can pick that up. It's just gonna help you a great deal. So yeah, now we have the level requirement weapon. You just, you know, our damage just skyrocketed. It's very unfortunate that you can only do Torment 6 because now we could definitely go way higher. But you can do that, of course. A very unfortunate. And now you can basically just kind of stand there in the middle and just use Blood Nova. Your essence is just gonna stay um, full because you are using the Devour Rune. So you can basically just stand still cast your blood nova everything's just gonna die it's just beautiful There you go, always try to keep that Massacre bonus up, never forget that. Here I actually completely screw up.
we're already level 55 now. And your seasonal journey is gonna be absolutely amazing too if you have the Blood Tide Blade. Like clearing all out the GR20 is gonna be an absolute breeze. It's gonna be no problem at all. Killing all the bosses might actually be kind of challenging though. Because you have the Blood Tide Blade, you don't deal any damage single target. So that actually might be a problem. But of course, most bosses you have to kill on like... Master and Torment 1. And so it's not that big of a deal. I believe your damage should be high enough. So you can see our damage is slightly falling off now, ever so slightly. Of course not if you hit a lot of enemies, but... You can notice our damage is, is falling off a little bit. Definitely focus on the toughness, I really can't say it enough. Even if you have a minus 10% damage, but you can get a plus 15% toughness, I would really go for that toughness. It's gonna help you a great deal. Now you don't actually have to go for the Eternal Torment, Spreading Malediction, Aura of Frailty. You, you don't have to go that, that route. What you could also do is just go for more toughness, so the last stand for the 100% more uh, armor. You could also go for the um, Rigor Mortis. That's also gonna give you more defenses. So you can definitely go more defensive too. Because there is not very much room for error. If you walk up the wrong way, you are gonna die. That's just the nature of, of all of these runs with every single weapon. Doesn't matter if you have, if you have the Relina Shadow Hook or the Blood Tide Blade, you are gonna get one shot anyways. So you really wanna make sure that... Yeah, you have that toughness and, you know, maybe some passives if you want that that are a little bit more defensive. Now I do like the Devour and the Satiated Rune because you gain more life and you have the Health Globes with Life from Death passive. So those Health Globes are gonna help you out because you're not really gonna get one-shotted and those Health Globes can be used for replenishment so you can keep your health up. So I think you just have to play around with that a little bit if you want the Satiated Rune or the Cannibalize. In this run, I only use Satiated, I don't go for Cannibalize at all. But I do think it might actually be a very good rune to use. Don't forget if you get in a sticky situation that you can use your Bone Armor. It's gonna stun everything around you. Which can also help you get into a better place to cast your Blood Nova. When you have the Elites, never fight them. Uh, what I do here is I, I drag the elite towards more enemies so I can actually nuke him down. But never focus the elite alone, just, you know, let him be. Don't even focus on it, it doesn't matter. Again, Season 22, you would get the Shadow Clone here, a little bit more damage. And the best case scenario, of course, is when you have the Shadow Clone and you could use that for the Cursed Chest event. I think that would probably be the best case scenario, just to get that more damage in, get more Massacre bonus. I also believe that 
with the shadow clones your corpse explosion is gonna be really amazing too because they are gonna drop corpses for you and those corpses can be used with corpse explosion with devour that's a little bit less useful but with all the other weapons that you're gonna use meltorius petrified spike with relina shadow hook with nayers black death it's gonna be a lot more useful because they're gonna spawn um corpses for you you can explode them so i believe it's gonna be very good So we're just gonna reset here. I believe we have to do two more runs. And I do believe we are gonna start dying a little bit here. So I can't stretch it enough. Just focus on that pure toughness. If you have more um, crafting materials left, you might want to craft some gear. Because generally, gear is always better when you craft them. It's not always the case, but most of the times they are. There we go. But yeah, if I can get a run like this... This was first try, by the way, so I just did it. That's why I'm not sure about the, the Devour rune. You might want to switch that one up. This was the first try. It is just a really strong. It's super easy to play. So if you can get this in the season, yeah, it's gonna be... It's gonna be incredible. So with your blood rush you can also, uh, when you're getting low, you can teleport towards or blood rush towards your health globes. That's gonna be very useful to keep you healthy. So you wanna keep on moving here, don't stand still because they are shooting the little balls. They're gonna deal a lot of damage. If you're just gonna stand still and cast your Blood Nova, you will die. So I would suggest to stutter step just a little bit or walk around. So cast one, move a little bit forward, cast one, move a little bit forward or backwards. So you just keep on moving. You're really gonna have to do that if you want to survive. And the big guys are the really annoying ones. The ones that, um, I don't even know what they do. It's like little guys that they pop out of their chest or their body and they kind of explode in a little area. Those are really annoying. So you have, actually have to watch out when they are spawning those little things. You really want to make sure that you don't run into those things because you are just going to die. And once you get into these levels, when you have elites, try to just get away from the elites as fast as possible. Because they will have some affixes where you can't deal with. You'll get one shot every single time. So it's not worth it to stay, just let them be, walk away. And just focus really on the little guys, to be honest. They can give you a really nice massacre bonus. If you can kill some under other enemies with it, that's very nice too. But definitely just focus on the little insects. So yeah, at this point in the game, you are gonna die quite frequently. Don't get frustrated, don't get annoyed. It is pretty normal. We have absolutely no gear. We just have... Uh, rare items uh, We have don't have anything special. We just have one blood tide blade You're already almost doing torment 6 on level 70, which is absolutely amazing So don't get annoyed or don't get angry. It's totally fine. You're gonna die Just you know try to play around it focus on the little guys Walk past enemies that you think you can't really clear out if you see a, a big density, you can pop it with your Blood Nova, you will always have that damage. But don't get too frustrated. Now the mistake that I did make is I already died a few times in the last run that I did. Um, before I restarted the game. And I actually didn't go and buy to the merchant because I'm almost level 70. I just wanted it to you know, get the best possible time that I could. But the, the better idea was to just go to the merchant, get my toughness in make myself a little bit stronger and then go do the run that would have been so much better because i actually lost time because i had to buy it anyways 
And now I have to run all the way back. So that wasn't great. Of course, at this point, you might want to swap out the Frailty and the Spreading Malediction and the Eternal Torment for more toughness. But of course, the extra percentage damage that you do get is quite significant. Here it is really important to stutter step or at least constantly walk around to get your health globes because you will die very easily. So you really have to walk around, get your health globes, try to hit as much enemies as you possibly can with your Blood Nova. If you can't clear this on Torment 6, I suggest for the last few levels you might want to drop it down a little bit to Torment 5, Torment 4. If you are more comfortable with that, that is totally fine. And yeah, just gonna clear it out. I honestly think at this point I can actually call it. Because with the Massacre bonus I'm probably level 70. But I just wanted to make sure so I just go a little bit further. And of course I get walled. Beautiful. Stupid elites. The elites are also spawning more frequently once you get to like the 70 mark. Around 65 you're gonna get more elites. That's also why it becomes a little bit more difficult. And we're level 70. Boom. So guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching. I really hope in Season 22 that you can get Maltorius or the Blood Tide Blade. I'm going to do the Nayers too and Rolina's Shadow Hook is coming. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.